Good afternoon everyone, this is Steve KI5JUF. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've put up a video, and uh, for those of you who uh, were wondering why, the uh, reason is my radio's been at Yesu for the last two months uh, for a, a repair problem. Uh, what happened was, back in late February, uh, around the first weekend of March, we noticed uh, we didn't have any VHF, UHF power, so we uh, didn't use it for a, for a while, and then we went back and tried it again, uh, and we st we smelled smoke coming out of the radio, so we essentially just uh, figured out that it was only the VHF, UHF side. Didn't it didn't impact the HF side. It, HF side was working fine. Matter of fact, I used the radio the entire weekend on HF. Just didn't use anything on the VHF and UHF. So, anyway, up to that point, what uh, what I wanted to do today is kind of go over uh, my experience with Yesu uh, interacting with the factory and kind of what my experiences were. So you could kind of get an idea of what you might expect if you have a warranty problem. So what I did, I'm going to sweep over to the um, to the computer, and what I did here is I kind of wrote up a little a little calendar of what happened. So essentially, the radio. Uh, this is the weekend we found it bad. The weekend of the uh, February fifth and sixth, or excuse me, March fifth and sixth. So what I did uh, Saturday, uh, I emailed the factory on their website. They have a repair page, and I emailed them Monday morning. I got an email back and it had a Word document that they had asked me to fill out explaining the, the problem, the serial number, the date of purchase, uh, and any other information that uh, you know you wanted to communicate to them. So I got that back from them on Monday morning. So what I did, I filled it all out and this is what the form, uh, let's see if I gotta see what the form actually looks like here. This is the actual form here, and you basically put all your address in, you put the model number, you put the serial number, and on this one here I put radio has no transmit power on VHF and UHF and smells of electrical burning. And then they ask you, do you want to fully insure the radio, which I, I fully insured it. Uh, I shipped it in the original box. Uh, so that was the form there. Um, so what happens is when you ship a radio to Yesu right now with COVID going on, Yesu has a policy where it will actually sit for 14 business days in what they call COVID quarantine, meaning the radio, it, nothing happens with the radio. It just probably sits in a warehouse, uh, who knows, clean room, whatever they're, you know, but it's, it doesn't get touched. So essentially what happened, I sent my radio FedEx three-day service and it arrived on the 11th of March. And then after that, the next business day, it goes into COVID hold. So roughly uh, almost uh, three straight weeks of uh, quarantine for COVID. Now after that, what happens is the radio goes into this next mode, which is called on the bench mode. Now this mode here um, basically doesn't mean a whole lot to me other than it means it's out of quarantine. I don't think it really means it's on the technician's bench. I think it just means it's in the workshop. Someone may at some point be looking at it, uh, but there's no other no other updates on it. So, essentially, as far as on the bench time goes, uh, that came to roughly about 19 business days. Uh, and then, of course, on the 28th of April, good news, I got an email. Looks like it was an automated email, but nevertheless, it was an email from Yesu uh, with an invoice attached to it for no charge and a tracking number. So at this point. Uh, the radio was picked up by FedEx on the 28th, and there were three business days, Monday or Thursday, Friday, and Monday. It was delivered Monday about 1.30. So what will happen is the invoice I got from Yesu basically says, you know, it, it just has your customer ID, which is something they will assign you, um, and of course the date and most, most importantly the tracking number. So. But the thing that was kind of disappointing to me was, um, and I'll go over this, there was no detail as far as what they repaired. There was nothing, no specific information about what component failed, why it failed, was it something that, you know, they've seen before, nothing, just a warranty repair. And when I first saw this, I thought, well, maybe they actually didn't do anything to it, but uh, it, it I got it back and it's got a full 55 watts of uh, power now, so it, it works fine. So they, they fixed it, I just don't know what they did. So the last thing, um, just to go over, 
uh, again, uh, emailed Yesu, they sent me a form to fill out, shipped it in the original box with the foam inserts, the FT991A box, and then I had a second box from FedEx around it. Uh, 14 days of COVID, 19 days of on the bench time, not weekends, of course. Um, what I would have liked to have had, just for my own, and if anyone from ever, Yesu ever sees this, just from a customer's perspective, um, I'm a loyal customer. I spend a lot of money with you guys, with your company. I buy a lot of your equipment, I and I like it, and I try to promote it because I think it's good quality equipment. But my expectations would be, uh, I would have liked to have had a phone call from the technician or the service administrator explaining what was found. It just says warranty repair. And I know in today's time, you know, that's maybe asking too much, but in my mind, I'm a technical person. I like to communicate information, what I learn, if something happened, burned up. I'd like to share that with everyone. So if someone else has the same problem, they might, you know, they might, you know, relate back or remember something that, you know, they saw in this video and it could be helpful. Uh, the, other, the other observation was uh, I did make a couple of phone calls. Um, when I did call, I would get an email back, uh, but again, I would have preferred to get a phone call. So, But uh, overall, I would say, you know, the service is fine. It's just with your radio brakes and it's a warranty repair, at minimum, you're probably looking at, at, at six weeks. Um, probably after COVID, it's still probably going to be six weeks, but no. Nonetheless, they were able to fix it and get it up and running. So. That's pretty much everything there um, on my experience. So I got a couple of things I'll show you today that I wanted to kind of follow up on uh, just before the radio broke. So what I'd like to do now is uh, there's two things I'd like to show you today. One of them is uh, what we call mic scan resume. So what happens is whenever you put the radio in scan mode, uh, right now if you're scanning memory locations or if you're scanning VFO for example if you're, if you're scanning a VFO channel what happens by default the radio comes in the mode what's called time and what will happen is if you get a transmission on a particular memory location the radio will stop scanning and it will actually lock onto there for three seconds and then after three seconds the radio will automatically resume scanning of either the memory bank or the VFO so what you can do is you can go in and you can change the uh, setting uh, mic scan and you can actually change that from uh, time to pause and what I'll do here is I'll go through and do this. This is the procedure. It's basically press the menu setup button, turn the multi knob to setting number 38 on the touch screen and then touch, um, uh, then select uh, on the touch screen and turn the multi knob from time to pause, touch enter and touch back and then it'll be updated. So I'll do that real quick and then we'll do the next one here. So, so what we'll do is we will press the menu setup and we'll dial in number 38 which is right there. Right now it's set to time. I'm going to hit select. Now what happens is when I hit select Notice how it turned uh, kind of a violet orange. Notice. Watch what happens. It'll turn kind of purple. That means it's highlighted. So when you see this right here in blue, time is the actual, that's the default setting from Yesu. But if I turn the multi knob, that'll turn it to pause. Now when it's on pause, it will, instead of resuming scanning after three seconds when it picks up a channel or activity, it'll just hold on that channel until that transmission is complete then it will go back to scanning completely when you're done just touch enter now you've made the change and touch back so now whenever you lock on to a particular channel in scan mode of memory or VFO it'll hold that until the transmission is complete then it'll resume scanning so the second thing I wanted to show you is when you purchase your radio it most likely will come in what's called uh, a spectra display mode and let me just show you let me put that up right now I'm going to go back here to 115 and I'm going to touch that whoops I'm going to change that back to spectrum now what we're looking at now is this is basically the spectrum analyzer so if there's traffic here you'll see 
uh, you'll see it right in here. You'll see the actual frequency and, and so forth. And right now, there's there's nothing going on. Now, what will happen is when you first get the radio, the spectrum analyzer is not going to do anything. And what you do is to make it active, you press the FM list button, and then you you scroll left and right, and you locate the sweep button, and you hold it for two seconds when you hear it beep. Now when you hear it beep, now the spectrum display is updating. See how it's changing? But if I, if I go back and turn it off, now it's locked. So what happens is now if you press it one time, it'll sweep it once. But if you press it again, it'll sweep it just once. It just sweeps across. But if you press and hold it, it becomes real time. So if you want to change the spectrum display, which is I think the, radio, the way the radio ships from Yesu, what you'll do is press the uh, menu setup and you'll select number 115 right here, touch set, uh, select. Now you see how it's in purple? I'm going to go ahead and dial this in to waterfall. Now it says waterfall, touch enter, and touch back. Now we have the waterfall display. So also what will happen is, if you press the button once, if the, if the waterfall display is not updating and all you see is this, but you're hearing traffic and so forth, I'll turn the squelch down here a little bit. See, there's no activity right now, so if I press the FM list and I touch and hold sweep for two seconds until it beeps twice, Now you see the display changing. I'll adjust the squelch back up, so let me demonstrate that again without the background noise. Now, now the spectrum display is not updating. I press it again and press and hold it for two seconds until it beeps twice. There it goes. Now the display is updating. So those are the two things I wanted to show you today. Not a whole lot of stuff. I'm, be, I'm going to be working on some more videos, particularly on Digital Narrow, Voice Wide, C4FM. Those are two modes within C4FM. Uh, digital Narrow, and which is 6.25 kilohertz digital, 6.25 kilohertz voice, and then there's Voice Wide, which is 12.5 kilohertz digital voice. So there's going to be some modes that we'll be going through in a little bit later on C4FM. Uh, but right now I just wanted to show you this, those two things, kind of give you an update. The other thing I got too is I picked up an M100 microphone and that's it right there and we'll be going over that. We'll be also covering some single sideband stuff, uh, go over some different ways to set the uh, parametric equalizer. We're going to go in and, and look at some things with the uh, uh, settings of the, uh, the mic gain, uh, uh, the processor and so forth. So I got some things I'm working on. I've been haven't really done a lot since I haven't had a radio, but now I'm going to start putting everything back online and try to get as much information as I can out to you guys because it helps me learn and also it, it brings an awareness to new users of things that they may have not known or picked up in the manual. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like to read the manual, but uh, I try to read the manual, write up a little thing in, in a, a narrative sheet and uh, and do a quick video on it. So. Anyway, folks, that's it from KI5JUF. So um, I'm so glad I've got a lot of followers. I'm really excited about that. I didn't realize uh, so many people would find the channel useful, but uh, makes me feel good. I feel uh, feel like I'm contributing to the hobby, which uh, is always fun. So anyway, leave your comments and subscribe. So this is KI5JUF. Thank you very much, uh, and have a good day, 73.